I'm Salah Devisenia and this is Salah TV's episode 2. In this episode, um, we're going to talk about the latest news in mobile technology as well as some details about the latest release of one of our package templates using a smart responsive uh, framework. I also like to talk about why we need this technology that lets both uh, mobile and desktop users see a single website content delivered to them intelligently, uh, regardless of what size device or operating system uh, they are using. Before I start talking about these uh, and our case study, uh, I'd like to go through some of the state of art uh, today with regards to uh, mobile and smartphone technologies and give you some recent data uh, compiled here for you by IDC and Gartner. This set of um, data is the latest available for uh, mobile web technology uh, and basically I com is compiled from what's published this month. In this slide, um, it really shows uh, the big winner, which is the wireless network data traffic increasing by 123%. And it's probably because the mobile um, infrastructure has become a lot better in managing data. Uh, active smartphones and wireless enabled PDAs uh, are, have also increased significantly by nearly 50%. Wireless enabled um, Tablets, uh, netbooks, laptops have also uh, shown similar 50% increase. The big negative I noticed uh, in all the uh, data uh, last month was the uh, demise of BlackBerry sales um, uh, by as much as 53%. Like last episode, this also shows that um, how fast the developing world uh, is moving towards uh, mobile. Uh, so the proportion of mobile only users are significantly higher in developing countries compared to here in the West. This slide shows how more and more users are making their purchases uh, through their mobile devices and um, 2015 um, almost 50% will use their mobile devices and um, this is the US data that 2016 as much as 31 billion dollar penny has dropped uh, for the bricks and mortar industry that they do need to take uh, the mobile business seriously um, into account and um, uh, if they don't uh, people are likely to just walk out of their stores and uh, uh, do this to the purchase online uh, rather than um, carrying the goods from the store. I'm fairly skeptical about this slide. 91% of mobile internet access is for social behavior. I talked to a number of friends and they don't think so. Here is a big number. Size of the mobile market. 4 billion. 4 billion out of 7 uh, Earth population. And uh, 1 in 4 uh, device is uh, able to browse the web. This slide projects when the usage in by mobile users uh, will pass uh, desktop users. Um, it's in um, agreement with everything else I've seen in the past that sometimes in 2013, 2014, we're going to see more people browsing the web with their mobile devices than desktop devices. Traditional um, TV producers should take note here. 86% um, of people in the West are watching TV with their mobile or tablet in their hand. So somehow they got to figure out how uh, to ensure that they send the message um, to the mobile devices um, while they're um, uh, broadcasting. We already, we already see that with some savvy channels like BBC and News uh, where they constantly um, ensure that you know the Twitter hashtag um, when they talk about a particular topic. This is an extremely good news for Google. Um, in my opinion, um, 200 million um, view on just mobile devices per day, they are already the 
biggest motion uh, content provider. All the previous slides um, really point to the fact that um, uh, you need to ensure that your web content um, can deal with uh, these two new devices. The lower cost tablets like uh, Google and Nexus at around $200 uh, or the Amazon tablet at around $200 uh, are coming out in large numbers in the next couple of months. Uh, and this is what's fueling uh, the forecasts in favor of non-OS devices. Having looked at some of the published all the data, I thought I'd also show you some real world statistics. Uh, here is one on one of our own hosted sites uh, in UK. This site attracts regular users and uh, gets a good um, number of users per month. It's around 30,000 uh, unique users. And that therefore it shows a good cross-section of public in UK and their web use. The site um... Uh, is in three parts and this is just one of the parts and it gets about 1000 unique users per day. Internet Explorer is still number one followed by Safari and then Chrome. This site has got its own native iPhone app. It's also got a dedicated uh, mobile only site uh, but it still gets 21% uh, uh, mobile users coming into the main site. This is the mobile device list and you can see the iOS uh, really takes majority of the uh, hits, uh, mainly iPad followed by iPhone. Here is the only other relevant data. Um, it's a small sample, but um, this is quite interesting. Android browsers are the fastest, Chrome and then Internet Explorer is uh, fairly slow on the same page load. And the other interesting um, data is that apparently people in Spain um, spend less time in loading the page. The next question is, what else is coming in the near future? From a technology standpoint, things are moving even faster. Siri in iOS, which allows uh, voice search, um, is one example. Uh, control with gesture. Uh, with Microsoft Connect for desktop devices is another. So there is good consensus in the web development community that now that web content needs to be able to deal with all these technologies, regardless of um, what device the user is using. Here at Solaro, we have uh, what could be uh, suiting your next, next web upgrade. This is using uh, DNN uh, and responsive CSS framework that all your website content can respond to uh, users, whatever technology uh, and device they're using. I'd like to show you how um, a .NET Nuke content management system um, can use the uh, responsive CSS framework um, to deliver content to both desktop, which you can see in this area here, and mobile users, as well as the tablets. Um, here we go uh, making the uh, browser size smaller. And you can see the menu remains the same. We're using here Telerik menu. Um, the content panes are also pretty good. Uh, we can go smaller and then suddenly when we reach the tablet size, the menu changes. And you can see that uh, in order to see the other tabs, this is what you need to do. You just need to tick, tick the menu. And let's go even smaller uh, to a typical size of, uh, let's say, iPhone. Uh, you can see the three panes have become more one pane. It's, everything is visible, just a longer view. Uh, on an iPhone, this is the navigation. It's Telerik, so it works. Um, the navigation submenu works pretty well uh, on practically every browser we have tested. And uh, for now, I'd like you to have a 
could look at a comparison between Siri and Google Voice Search in Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. All right, so the iPhone here is running iOS 6 Beta 2, and the Galaxy Nexus is running a pre-release Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. Let's go ahead and exit out, and I'm going to ask it simple questions that I use all the time for my voice assistants. Let's go ahead and get started. What's the weather? It's 18 degrees with haze Nice weather run. coming Here's up through Tuesday. The next few up days. to 79 degrees and partly sunny. So Galaxy Nexus came through first. And actually, the voice, if you guys could hear it, uh, was a little less robotic on the Galaxy Nexus than it is on Siri. In fact, let me just go ahead and do a quick uh, demonstration here, just so you can hear what the voice sounds like. Uh, but this definitely did it quicker. What's the weather today? The forecast for Irvine today is 29 degrees and clear. So it sounds a little more uh, human-like, and it was in Celsius because I haven't changed those settings yet. Um, let's go ahead and try something new. Set a timer for 10 minutes. Setting alarm. OK, 10 minutes and counting. So that was almost exactly the same time, but it looked like the Galaxy Nexus actually came through a little bit faster. Uh, let's go ahead and try some sports stuff. Who won the Angels game yesterday? The Angels beat the Orioles one moment. to one. The Angels definitively beat the Orioles by a score of 13 to one yesterday. That one again goes to the Galaxy Nexus by a lot, uh, actually. All right, let's go ahead and ask it some questions. How tall is Kobe Bryant? Kobe Bryant is six feet six inches Kobe Bryant is six foot six. So you see the cards that pop up. And once again, the Galaxy Nexus uh, beat it. The appearance might not be as pretty as Siri, but it's faster. And the voice sounds incredibly more human. Uh, let's go ahead and try a few more things. Remind me to film Nexus 7 review. Setting OK, alarm. I'll remind you to film a Nexus 7 review. When would you like to be reminded? So turns alarm tells me when I want to what set it. <laughs> so I can remind you at a specific time. So you can see how things do it differently. Siri by voice tell it what I want. This pulls up a menu where I could select the different options. Uh, let's go ahead and ask it to show me some pictures. Show me pictures of French bulldogs. If you like, I can search the web for pictures of French bulldogs. So <laughs> the uh, Google search on the Galaxy Nexus just pulled up pictures. Siri is now asking if I wanted to search the web, so we'll do that. Yes. Searching the web for pictures of French bulldogs. So when we, compare, when we compared Siri to S Voice, it was a complete blowout for Siri. When we compare Siri to the default Google search now in Jelly Bean, uh, really is essentially a blowout as well, but uh, not for Siri. Uh, incredibly impressive here what Google has done. This is an entirely new ball game uh, for Android. If Voice Assistant was one of the big reasons you were going to consider uh, an iPhone 4S, you might want to look at a Galaxy Nexus or one of the early devices that are going to be getting Jelly Bean. Uh, first impressions have been really impressive uh, of it. I'll do a full overview of Jelly Bean and walk through some of the new features. Uh, but just going voice assistant to voice assistant, uh, really nice what Google has done. Now granted, both of these are still in beta. And once iOS 6 becomes official, and once Jelly Bean is officially out uh, and available to consumers on devices, I'll revisit these tests. But first opinions definitely has to go to the Galaxy Nexus.